Any employee with symptoms associated with acute gastrointestinal illness, such as vomiting, diarrhea, fever, sore throat with fever, or jaundice, should be restricted from working with food. Company policy should encourage employees to report illnesses to their supervisor so that the employee may be reassigned to a job that does not require contact with food. Exposed areas of arms, wrists, and forearms that contain infected wounds should be completely covered by a dry, tight-fitting, impermeable bandage. Cuts or burns on the food worker's hands should be thoroughly bandaged and covered with a clean glove. The following steps should be used to properly wash hands. Wash hands in hot water, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Soap should be applied to the hands. The surface of the hands, wrists, and forearms should be rubbed vigorously for at least 20 seconds. The areas in between the fingers, under nails, and forearms should also be scrubbed. Many microorganisms can be removed by friction alone. Soaked and scrubbed hands should be rinsed under clean, warm, running water and then dried with a clean, disposable towel. Except when washing sprouts or when otherwise approved by the regulatory authority, food workers should minimize contacting exposed sprouts with their bare hands. Rather, they should use suitable utensils such as tongs, spatulas, or single-use gloves. Single-use gloves are frequently used to avoid direct hand contact, but gloves may create a false sense of security for food handlers. Dirty gloves, like dirty hands, can contaminate products. Single-use gloves should never be washed. They should always be thrown away when they need to be changed. An employee should put on fresh gloves only after thoroughly washing their hands. Employees should understand the importance of maintaining clean gloves. Single-use gloves should be changed after any activity that may contaminate them. In other words, single-use gloves should be changed as often and for the same reasons as an employee would wash their bare hands. If non-disposable gloves, such as rubber gloves, are used in the facility, they should be washed as frequently as bare hands. Hands should be washed before and after putting on non-disposable gloves. Conveniently located and properly equipped hand washing facilities are key factors in getting employees to wash their hands. Hand washing stations should be located in or adjacent to restrooms and should also be located in food processing areas. Hand washing stations should be clean and well maintained and should not be used for purposes other than hand washing. Hand washing stations should be equipped with hot and cold running water under pressure, a supply of soap, and a means to dry hands. Hot water should be at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold water does not remove oils, which may harbor microorganisms on the hands. Individual disposable towels are the preferred hand drying devices. Adequate waste containers should be supplied for used towels. Hand or glove dips may also be considered. Sanitizers designed for this purpose can be obtained from a sanitation supply company and should be prepared according to the label instructions. Hand or glove dips are only appropriate for use with clean hands or gloves. These dips are not a substitute for proper hand washing. The sanitizing solution should be monitored and changed frequently to maintain sanitizer strength. Boot dips are sometimes used to sanitize the bottom of boots or shoes when an employee moves from one part of the facility to another. When properly maintained, boot dips can reduce the spread of microorganisms throughout a facility. However, the sanitizing solution in boot dips can easily become depleted. The sanitizer level should be maintained in the trays in order for these devices to be effective. When used, maintenance of hand, glove, and boot dips should be included as part of the SSOP. Toilet facilities are required for all employees. Employee restrooms should be conveniently located and accessible to employees during all hours of operation. Toilet facilities near work areas promote good personal hygiene reduce loss productivity, and permit closer supervision of employees. Materials used in the construction of toilet rooms and toilet fixtures should be durable and easily cleanable. The floors, walls, and fixtures in toilet areas should be clean and well maintained. Toilet tissue and disposable paper towels should be supplied along with easy to clean containers for waste materials. Poor sanitation in toilet areas can spread disease. Dirty toilet facilities can also have a negative effect on the attitudes and work habits of the employees. Include these areas in the routine cleaning program to assure they are kept clean and in good repair. Food or food packaging materials should never be stored in restroom areas. Managers play a very important role in helping their employees prevent contamination of food products. 
Managers should provide a clear understanding of the personal hygiene practices and company policies regarding illness and other health conditions such as infected wounds that could contaminate products. Policies that provide reassurance that employees will not lose their job if they report an illness or a communicable disease should be developed. Management should continually emphasize how important it is for employees to maintain a high level of cleanliness and good health and should serve as role models for good work habits and acceptable hygienic practices. They should also ensure that visitors are required to follow the same hygienic practices as employees and have policies in place that prevent unauthorized personnel from being in food processing areas. Adequate documented training is essential. Company expectations for proper hygiene and hand washing procedures should be clearly defined in pre-employment and periodic training programs. New employees should receive training prior to beginning employment, even if it takes considerable time and effort. Once employees understand what is expected of them, effective supervision of employee practices in food processing areas should be used to ensure that employees follow proper procedures. Training should be reviewed whenever incorrect practices are observed. Employees are less likely to follow good personal hygiene expectations when facilities and supplies are insufficient. Management has responsibility for providing properly located and maintained facilities and supplies that will allow employees to adhere to personal hygiene requirements, including dressing or changing rooms that are adequate and properly maintained, laundry services and or uniform services as necessary, designated employee areas for breaks where eating and drinking is allowed, strategically placed and well-stocked hand-washing facilities throughout the production area. In summary, sprouts, sprout contact surfaces, or sprout packaging materials should be protected from contamination with microorganisms or foreign substances. Achieving this includes having a healthy, clean, and properly trained workforce that understands the importance of proper hand washing techniques and personal hygiene. Adequate training programs and management supervision are critical to the preparation of safer sprouts.